Yeah, it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is March 5th, 2019. Shout out to my man Ryan Cooper for this song request. He's actually the producer of this song I've got playing right now in the background. So shout out to him, DeVille Productions, Coop DeVille. Check him out on SoundCloud.com slash Coop DeVille. Real nice mellow track right here, man. Appreciate the song request. What's up, people? How you guys doing today? Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. And today, we are going to be looking at an article out of Decrypt Media uh, talking about this company, Elliptic, which was the company that Coinbase pushed out. And I don't know if Coinbase put out the rumors or the allegations that they were selling personal data. But the CEO of this company, um, one of a few different companies that Coinbase had commissioned for different blockchain analysis and such. This, this CEO said he came out with a statement saying that his company was not selling any identifiable customer data. I don't know what that means, identifiable. This Coinbase thing is getting out of hand. I don't have too much sympathy for them. I should put it to you that way. The other article is out of CCN and it's about Starbucks unveiling key details about its secretive Bitcoin strategy. So I've uh, got this article we're going to look over as well. Caught my eye um, again. I'm just going to be honest with you. I know a lot of people are like all happy and stuff for Bitcoin to be used at, at, at brick and mortar and online. I'm sorry, people. It's just not going to catch on that way. Uh, it may bring a little bit more PR exposure to Bitcoin in itself. But Bitcoin will not you will not see it in the future being utilized as a currency to pay uh, for items, goods, and services, and such, just not going to happen. It's a deflationary currency. I have to always remind people this: it's a deflationary currency that inherently will be worth much more in the future than it is today, and that's going to be the theme for Bitcoin in the future. You know, volatility-wise, I don't see that slowing down either. So again, merchants aren't going to want to take on the risks of a currency that moves ten percent plus or minus for no reason it's not going to be something that a merchant will be uh, up for it just won't and you know people saying well you can just they can just take the bitcoin and convert it they can have it converted over well if you if you're going through all of those loops and hoops <laughs> to do that guess what it's going to end up being almost the same or it may be even more in commission fees for converting these types of uh, transactions it, you might as well just use visa or mastercard at that point you know, if that's going to be the case. So in order for Bitcoin to be used in that way, um, I think the protocol would have, would have had to been changed where it's inflationary or near inflationary or less deflationary, however you want to look at it, and enough tokens in circulation for it to have a very stable price. That's just my two Satoshis on that. We'll take a look at both of those articles, though. I thought those were very neat. And uh, it would be interesting to share that with you guys today. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at that market cap. We are currently at $131 billion. Bitcoin dominance is at 51.78%. We're in such a low volume type of environment. These whales, man. Whales, and I'm, what I mean by whales, I'm talking about exchanges primarily. I believe that exchanges are moving these markets around. Stop hunting looking to uh, just really churn the markets and not really go too much of anywhere. So as you can see here, if I zoom out two months, we uh, did exactly what I was hoping we would do. And that was to bounce off of that area, roughly around 124, as you can see here. So that was good to see. We were, we were definitely below 124 on the market cap um, the other day. But uh, we did bounce back above that. And it looks like that may just be a floor for us uh, at the moment. Who knows what's going to happen next. But uh, that was a good move. A good move to see there. And with the uh, actual Bitcoin chart, as you can see, again, a lot of wash trading from here to here, back up to here. Just complete wash. It's just nothing happened. Short squeezing all the way up by initiated by exchanges. You can see the market tried to take out stops. It probably took out a lot of stops. It missed our stop. We took profit on the short down here, 30% of the short, because I knew this was probably going to just turn back right around and try to knock out a lot of people in the market. So that's exactly what it did. 
So we're still short the remaining two thirds of this position. Man, this market, and look at this. This was, if, if we were long or even short, you would have been stopped out. And if you were short, yeah, you would have been good there, but when it popped back up here, you would have been stopped out right here. So again, a lot of just stop hunting going on with low liquidity environments. That is what happens, people. That is what happens. So the first article out of Decrypt Media, and it is about this analytic company, blockchain analytic company called Elliptic that used to work with Coinbase. It says here, Elliptic CEO responds to allegations it was selling Coinbase customers data. The last week has been a PR nightmare for Coinbase, it says. Not only has it come under fire for buying Neutrino, a company whose founding members had been involved in selling spyware to oppressive governments, the company's director of sales has just admitted that Coinbase's previous providers had been selling client data. So far, Coinbase has not officially commented on the subject despite its sales chief Christine Sandler telling Chatter TV that some of his partners had been doing exactly that. One of those providers was blockchain analytics company Elliptic, whose CEO, Dr. James Smith, said in a public statement that it had not been selling identifiable customer data. Our exchange clients, including Coinbase, do not provide us with any personal identifiable information about their users. Smith added, we do not require or request any transaction data that we can link to individuals and do not have any other client information such as names, addresses, or social security numbers. So what information does Elliptic receive? According to Smith, details on transaction hashes and customer IDs. The customer ID data says Smith contains no identifying information, but it can be used to connect multiple transactions to the same person. This data is chiefly used to identify suspicious actors and is one of the main techniques used to prevent financial crime. Elliptic used this type of data to trace funds that were stolen from BitThumb exchange in 2018 and identified that it went to a Russian crypto exchange. Binance has been known to use a similar technique. Considering the value of blockchain data, it's not hard to see why Coinbase wanted to bring such a service in-house by acquiring Neutrino. But as we've reported previously, buying a company with an executive board known for selling spyware might not have been the best salve for a company that was selling data to its highest bidder. What do you guys think about that whole Neutrino thing? Do you think uh, Coinbase just slipped and, and didn't do their full due diligence on what Neutrino uh, prior business dealings were? I think they knew. I honestly think they knew and just thought that no one would, uh, in the public eye, would find out or even think to dive deeper to see what Neutrino was all about. Very bad PR move for Coinbase for sure. I don't know, man. Are they just trying to throw other companies under the bus that they used in the past? I think it was a smoke and mirror type of move that Coinbase did to throw people's attention off of Neutrino, that acquisition. The second article is out of CCN and it says here, Starbucks unveils key detail about its secretive Bitcoin strategy. An article in the block yesterday includes the following statement, only U.S. customers will be able to pay in Bitcoin initially. They're referring to Starbucks' recent deal with Bact, the great hope of the crypto industry, which might manage to pull off the first crypto ETF. The deal gives Starbucks significant equity in Bact, but at no point does it actually require Starbucks to accept Bitcoin. And for its part, Starbucks reportedly has no intention of doing so, at least not in the conventional manner. It says the company told NextWeb that rather than accept crypto directly, it will create more ways for customers to convert Bitcoin and other assets into fiat, which can then be used at their stores. Our role as a flagship retailer for Bact is to consult and develop applications for customers to convert the digital assets into U.S. dollars, which can then be used in our stores. We anticipate that a range of cryptocurrencies will gain traction with customers, and through our work with BACT, we will be uniquely positioned to constantly consider and offer customers new and unique ways to pay seamlessly at Starbucks. As we continue to move forward with this work, we anticipate we'll have more to share in the coming months. So some type of gift card solution is what's brewing at Starbucks. 
some kind of backed power seamless payment platform seems possible as regards to the seattle based coffee giant however the notion of a bitcoin qr code at checkout seems far-fetched these days actually bitcoin acceptance is more complicated than ever mainstream bitcoin core supporters askew the idea of paying for things like coffee with bitcoin unless you're talking about using the lightning network unfortunately that puts an even greater technical demand on companies like starbucks who are already unlikely to integrate crypto payments bitcoin cash on the other hand wants exactly this type of transaction but neither is currently in the running for replacing the gift cards that Starbucks uses in their apps. It seems the goal of backed partnership is to be a test case for expanding payment options. International travelers might get the best of the deal. Maybe some type of stable settlement mechanism. Perhaps you'll be able to instantly convert your funds from back home for daily use at international merchants beginning with Starbucks. Article finishes up by saying other blockchains could arguably handle it, but there's an issue of user demand historically speaking dozens of companies have integrated crypto payments only to find out that a lack of demand makes it less than worthwhile major companies like expedia have quietly discontinued bitcoin payments and we have to ask ourselves if we want starbucks to be the next on the list to do so so there you have it this article i mean really supports my theory about the use case for bitcoin going forward it won't be for payments and actually having people convert from bitcoin to a stable coin then paying it just adds more friction to what's already a a seamless operation for most uh in today's society with you know being able to pay with your phone or paying with the card that you just tap on on the uh device at the cash register it's just i, I don't think uh this is the best way for us to get adoption for uh for bitcoin um we either need to push for other cryptocurrencies that better suit this but honestly the only one i see is a stable coin i'm just going to be honest with you a stable coin is the only one i see being uh utilized in a in a manner where it makes sense at a point of sale you guys let me know your thoughts it looks like they're going to have some type of you know convert your bitcoin to a gift card type of mechanism or machine in in some of these uh starbucks would you guys use that is there actually an even need for that you can use a whole bunch of different crypto cards if you want to pay for it i don't know you guys let me know your thoughts um would love to know and we can have that debate in the comments below that's pretty much it though for today ladies and gents again shout out to my man ryan cooper for that song request it's actually produced by him hoop deville it's your boy crypto blood and that's my two satoshis for march 5th 2019. Come out of here, people. Holla!